very excited about it and thank you Eugene for all the help and work through the process it's a very hard process but uh, we fi finally able to do it yeah I mean you you came to America for the very first time like six seven years ago seven years ago and you were looking at writing your story at that time but it wasn't the right time why did you wait uh, it's not the right time maybe I wasn't prepared mm. Um, besides, um, I don't like the way it's um, the process and that, at that time going. So it's different than now because, you know, um, there's so much, there's uh, more much about my personal life story on the, on the case. So when I have to tell a part of my story, I have to explain how, why things happen yeah. and what, uh, what the reason the situation went that direction. Yeah. So that's one of the the, the issues at that time, and uh, and it's God's timing, not ours. So this is His time, and that's the way He wanted to happen. To I'm be. so excited <laughs> about this. For those of you that are not familiar with Miriam's story, she is a hero of mine. Uh, when I first met her for the very first time, you know my background. For those of you that do know me. My background is in the United States Marine Corps. This is one of the toughest people I've ever met. I was super excited when I could meet her for the first time. And if you're not familiar with her story, in 2013, she was arrested and charged with apostasy for ex not accepting Islam. She was mm -hmm. born with a Muslim father, right? And yes. because you had a Muslim father, by law, considered Muslim. You're considered Muslim. Yeah, but you weren't a Muslim. Christian, yeah. You were raised as a Christian because of your mother. Yes, I was raised as a Christian. And uh, that's why I would say, in order for me to explain my story, I have to explain why that yeah. things happen. Because when you tell people, um, I was sent to jail because I'm Christian. Like, why this happened? So <laughs> that's the most simple way to explain yeah, it, right? But yeah. yet you feel that there needs to be modifiers. Based there needs to be an explanation based. because you weren't just sent to jail mm -hmm. because you were a Christian. Yeah, not In a Muslim country, that. you were considered Muslim mm -hmm. and you can't change yeah, your faith. Because I'm a child for a Muslim father and Christian mother. Yeah. So, and then the other problem also came back again to me as a girl. So I'm considered a Muslim girl. I'm not going to be able to marry um, from outside Islamic um, community. I mean, yeah, I have to marry a Muslim. Man. So this is tell a story with children have no right to choose where, what, what to believe. You born for a Muslim father, you have to follow the same faith. And then you're a girl, you can. Because you're a girl, you can marry. But a Muslim man can marry um, any other religion. Any, anybody. Any a other Muslim religion. man can marry anybody. Any other but a Muslim religion. woman only has yeah. one destination, which is marrying a Muslim, a Muslim man. man. And the reason they, that sustains one of the thought about one of the opinion on, on why women cannot marry a different religion, because they think women, women are weak. So when you marry another ma a man from a different, when you're a Muslim girl, you marry from a different religion, that you're going to be forced, like your husband is going to convince you to, to, to convert to its religion. And the reason they allow Muslim men to marry uh, any other religions because young women are weak, Muslim man can convince his wife to convert to Islam. And because you were not a Muslim mm -hmm. and you would not accept Islam, you were sentenced to a hundred lashes, mm -hmm. you were put in prison, mm -hmm. uh, sentenced to hang, death by hanging, mm -hmm. you were put on death row, you were shackled, mm -hmm. you were pregnant, mm -hmm. you had your one-year-old with oh, you. Yeah, and I mean, this whole story mm -hmm. for me was, was amazing as you began to unwrap it and shared it with me in details. But you just talked about something that was a surprise to me. There were funny things along the way that you shared. For instance, you said uh, in uh, countries that are um, uh, controlled by Sharia law, they, they treat women as if they're very weak and they don't understand. So that's why Muslim women can only marry Muslim men. And you shared something. You said that whenever Muslim women are involved in a traffic accident, mm -hmm. Sometimes they come with bottles of water. Why do <laughs> they? Bu bu why do they bring uh, bucket of water? Yeah, they think that um, <laughs> because women are weak, they can get scared, so they pee on themselves. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah. So they peel so that's themselves. why they didn't want it to get in Paris with getting wet. So they, <laughs> as soon before the officer opened the door and get you out, this. <laughs> <laughs> they throw water on there you. There's the water on you. <laughs> so, so that you're can... wet with water and not... Yeah, moving. Yeah. And it's not always happened. There's main involvement in traffic accident. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's not. So, yeah. <laughs> no. But no. It just, I had never um, heard this before until your story. Mm -hmm. It was really actually uh, it's like an, uh, an, a conversation on social media a couple of months ago. Like, <laughs> yeah, why are they doing that? And, you know. Now, one yeah. of the things that I love about your story is that you reveal the the hardship for women and for christians and children growing up in a nation ruled by sharia law you uh, open up the window for someone that may not understand what it's like to live under sharia law that may not even know what the definition of sharia law is your story reveals a lot of those things Yes, you know, this is a part of the, the beginning. Oh, at that time, I'm really not like, am I really um, being that uh, face for those people? Yeah, like, I never adopted, even when I went to prison, like, there's too many things I have never thought is happening in my country or in the community. I know we face persecution and we live with it. Like, we, we bow our head and it's okay. Things are they told you in the story. But um, at that time, when I, when I have to leave Sudan, I was released. And when I sit to myself and I remember everything, like, there's something like my, um, the reason I went through all that, God had purpose for my, my, these things to happen to me. And that's why I was rescued. That's why I was able, you know, to survive. I'm surviving, you know. I'm not a victim, but there's too many people are released still being trapped on this. So, and I feel myself, I'm responsible for too many mm. to tell, to speak up and to tell. My story is not just, it isn't mine. Mm. It's my story, I, as I told you, I bear too many scars on my yeah. body. And yeah. every and each scar yeah. tell a story of a thousand women and girls yeah. that are being trapped and being mistreated under this law and and we have the traditional custom also. Sometimes yeah. it's more dangerous than Sharia law. <laughs> so that's... <laughs> Today, right now, around the world, people are talking about getting vaccines. Mm -hmm. Vaccines for the COVID virus, vaccines for the flu. You got vaccines for malaria, but it, they, oh. were, they were unlike <laughs> vaccines that I've ever heard in my life. This is also revealing your story. From malaria, other disease, yes. One of them was, you said that you have scars on your arm where yeah, they, they burn your arm in order to make Not you... me, they do for everybody. That's for everybody, really, yeah, yeah. Because you need to do that, you know. And, and there's specific people like are in charge of doing that. Yeah, yeah this is some of the traditional custom we have. And you know, that, like cousin have to marry their cousin or thing like that. The beautiful girl have to marry somebody in the family so she don't. <laughs> and then the wealthy child, the wealthy families, they have, you know, their kids have to marry their relatives so their wealth don't go outside the family. Yeah. So we have all, <laughs> all this stuff. Yeah. I remember you told me that you had a cough, a severe cough. And then oh, somebody to came to help you with the cough. How did they help you? Um, no, not me. We don't no. have, we have like this, this the flu season. Yes, the flu season. You see that yeah. the vaccine, that's what they do. So and, like, and, like protection from the cough. So. And then they, 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 they used a rod, right? And they burned in, right in your throat. <laughs> For and everybody you almost have that. And then you have very uh, bad reaction to the, uh, to the Anytime anybody puts a hot so, poker on your throat. Yeah, you because they done it reaction. after somebody, I think, after somebody else. So yeah. they, he shouldn't done it like, yeah. So it's like medical, uh, what does this call it? A mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. One, one of the things that, because I mean, your story, you know, as you grow up in a country that is ruled by Sharia law and you talk about being a young child, being a girl, um, being subjected to some of the things that you were subjected to, um, you decided that you, I don't want to just rely on Islamic medicine or traditional medicine or uh, medicine that involves putting hot pokers mm -hmm. in my neck. You went to medical school. Yeah, I did. And beside, beside that, also my experience with, at the refugees camp where I was born. So, and this is something happening now. We um, you see this huge amount of refugees are coming out from Ethiopia and Eritrea. They fleeing war 
between the two countries and now those people they not even have any access to any support from United Nations or from Sudan even the government mm. so I have seen that like how people suffer struggle to find medical treatment support so that's one of the reasons I went to medical school it, which is a, by itself a miracle. I mean, you like you yeah, said, you were born is, in a refugee camp, yeah. and then you go to Sudan's most prestigious mm. me- medical school to become a doctor. Yeah, because um, also my mom always encouraged me because education for me as a girl who had no f- big, big family or support, so you have no other options than getting education. Like all my the girls on my age from high school, they get married. So for me, I have to continue education <laughs> like that. That's the only way I can, you know, be a better person for yeah. myself and for her, yeah. for my family. Yeah. Now, there was one part, and, and so this is a very interesting part in prison because at one point, you actually are by a midwife. There's a midwife that is with you, and she says, you died in prison. And so you died, and you came back. I don't and know. and you still <laughs> you said I don't remember it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Usually re- people that I die. Pain. Yeah, but you were yeah. definitely unconscious. Yes. And so you you were not mm-hmm. conscious of what was happening, but the midwife said you died. Yeah. And um, she was with, even scared to continue. Like yeah, but she had to rescue the baby. She had to rescue the baby as you're giving birth in prison, mm-hmm. in chains, in shackles. Mm-hmm. And I believe that when you and I connected and we started talking about this book, that this is one of the things that God wanted to do, that Mm -hmm. the reason why you're alive, the reason why you were uh, able to Mm -hmm. leave from prison Mm -hmm. is to share this testimony Mm -hmm. as well as to work with women. And right now that's what you do. You work with women around the world that have been persecuted and are suffering religious persecution. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like I wasn't, I didn't do anything in all this process. God has carried me through all this trials and situation that uh, where I grow up and how I get finished my education and then in prison <laughs> and then my release. Yes. So I want to share that with everyone. Yeah. I'm so excited. Because it's not mine, it's not belong to me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So this book will be available in 2022 on March 8th, International Women's Day. Mm -hmm. So on International Women's Day, this book will be released. And if you have read the Wikipedia page about Miriam, if you have read any of the news stories about Miriam, you can quickly feel that you understand the story. And I thought I understood a lot about your story. But when we sat down and she began to unravel all of the things that you did not hear in the news, when she shares about the details of being in prison and what it was like growing up in a refugee camp inside of Sudan, it will completely transform what you think you know about Miriam's story. So next year, 2022, March 8th, International Women's Day, we are going to be coming out with a new book about Miriam's life. And I hope that it is a blessing for you. I want to thank you guys that are friends of Back to Jerusalem that have been praying for us, that have been praying for Miriam. For any of you that are watching that are friends of Miriam, I want to thank you for praying for her. Please pray for us as we work on this project together. And if you never heard of Miriam before, you're going to want this book. Yes. God bless you.